way. Um, so another one that I want to talk about is uh, thymic peptide. So I don't know if you people know how important the thymic gland is and also the pineal gland. So all these, so thymic, let's talk about thymus. So thymic proteins, so proteins produced by thymus peak at age 10 and then sharply declines and it stays at a steady low level from our mid thirties. So they just, you know, they're, they're low and uh, thymus shrink and degrade. And that process is influenced by age, obesity, calorie intake, genetics, inflammation, stress, pregnancy, toxins, um, hypothyroidism, low growth hormone levels, chronic infection and zinc deficiency. So um, the progressive thymic dysfunction and causes, you know, immune senescence. So getting immune system, getting old, and that will lead to increases, you know, becoming more susceptible to infections. So more vulnerable, and then also inadequate immune response to vaccines and also increased tendency for autoimmune diseases, increased cancer risk and increased cardiovascular disease. And overwhelming majority of patients with autoimmune diseases actually have abnormal thymus size. And then majority of people have pineal gland calcification by age 30. So our pineal gland is, you know, is basically heartened and um, are, are not functioning um, very, very well at all. Um, so we utilize certain peptides to replace um, the thymic um, the peptides was identical to thymic pe peptides and also pineal peptide. So um, the thymic peptides include um, TB500, also called thymosin beta-4 or TB4. They're found in all tissues and you know of all kinds of types, except for blood cells, red blood cells. And um, they are also found in uh, you know cerebral spinal fluid and wound fluid. And um, they have incredible regenerative activity um, and that has been shown in traumatic brain injury and in spinal cord injury, stroke, MS, um, and other ischemic damages. It can support immunity, improve T cell function, is antimicrobial and protects, I mean, promotes angiogenesis and accelerates collagen deposition. And it calms muscle spasms improves muscle tone and it stretches connective tissue. So it maintains flexibility and it also reduces inflammation in joint tissue and prevents formation of adhesions and the, the fib, you know, fibrotic band formation in muscles and, and tendons and uh, ligaments it can help with dry eyes, um, lung fibrosis, fatty liver disease. Um, it's also protected for the heart. So it reduces systemic inflammation due to infection. The benefits that's been shown in Lyme disease, HIV, uh, chronic fatigue syndrome, fibromyalgia, autoimmune diseases, infections, myocardial infarction, MS, Alzheimer's, peripheral neuropathy. And um, it also is very helpful for um, things like influenza, um, or, or common codes um, and other type of viruses. So it's a very, again, it's a very broad acting peptide. And, um, and it's, you know, again, it's like a keychain with multiple keys on it. And um, it just, it helps so many things, you know, the brain, the immune function, the cardiovascular system, your muscular skeletal system. So it just, uh, you know, tremendous peptide. And then another one we use is T-alpha-1, thymosin alpha-1. And that one also helps improve uh, tissue repair and healing, improves host defense um, capabilities. It uh, inhibits viral replication or cancer growth. It can improve microcirculation and improve stress tolerance, increase antioxidant and glutathione production. It can reverse immune suppression um, from uh, chronic fatigue or fibromyalgia or Lyme disease. It reduces inflammation. It is anti-tumor, 
has anti-tumor properties, prevents and treats autoimmunity, and it, its level significantly lowers in patients with severe infection and cancer. And, um, and the TB4 or TB500 uh, can effectively reduce incidence of flu from 19% to 5.5% in comparison to placebos. And when you inject TB4 into mice at three and a half months, it increased their lifespan by 28%. So, and it decreased, also decreased rate of their cancer by 2.8 folds. So almost threefold decrease in cancer rates. Um, it increases cancer relapse-free survival time. It's approved in more than 30 countries as a vaccine adjunct. So as a, um, you know, helper for vaccines. Um, because it enhances the vaccine's benefit uh, in the treatments of Hep B, Hep C, or AIDS. It's actually um, FDA approved under orphan drug program. The, some of the target conditions um, where thing, benefits that's been shown include Lyme disease, HIV, uh, viral infections, immune deficiency, chronic fatigue syndrome, fibromyalgia, autoimmune conditions, diabetes, uh, allergies, chemical sensitivity, cancer, um, aging, uh, or, you know, just preventative, um, you know, in travel situations. 